Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be talking about all the movies I watched in September of 2024. A Tale of Springtime is how I started this month off. Now, this movie, it's actually labeled as a comedy and a romance, which feels just completely off. That's not at all what it is. It's very much just a simple slice of life movie. I was like kind of wanting a romance movie. I haven't watched a whole lot. And I thought, okay, this is an interesting, you know, French romance movie. I'll, you know, give it a shot. Uh, it was not much of a romance at all. It's very much a slice of life. It's focused on the friendship of these two girls. And once I figured out really what the movie was going for, I got pretty into it. And I found it quite interesting and just satisfying just to watch it play out. There was a point where I was kind of like, okay, what are we doing? Like it, being a slice of life, there's not always a whole lot happening, which there doesn't always have to be. But it kind of feels like this movie wanted to do things and it was like, oh, this is kind of supposed to be a big moment. But the fact that it's a slice of life doesn't lend it too well to that. I just feel like it wasn't handled perfectly. But overall, my experience with this movie was that it's good. I thought it was an interesting slice of life, which we do not get enough of. Nausicaa, this being Miyazaki's first film and being made before Ghibli was even really Ghibli. This is interesting, and it's cool to see a lot of the roots of the very traditional Ghibli ideas and what you kind of see reoccurring in lots of Ghibli movies, and you, you see those here, and I think it's really interesting in that way, but it also really does kind of feel like a first film. I think it lacks a lot of nuance that later films really bring to the table, and it just kind of feels like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a Ghibli movie. You know what you're going to get, and it gives it to you. I think it's still quite good, but they clearly evolved and Ghibli gets better later on. Now, Beetlejuice. This was my first time watching it. I was watching it in preparation for the new one coming out. And this is just a whole lot of fun. I kind of knew that that's what it was, but it still delivered. Like, it was still new and interesting. And it was super fun. It's really hard to find a whole lot of depth in a movie like this. But I don't think it needs to. I think it does a really good job at just being creative and cool and interesting and just bringing a lot of ideas to the table. Like the main concept is just so creative and unique and like it's just a fun movie. I don't know if I can recommend this to like everyone, but it feels like a movie that the majority of people will enjoy because I don't think it has any over glaring flaws. You know, a lot of the practical effects, those are really cool. The way they use stop motion, it's just really cool. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Now, I already made a video about this video, so I'm not going to exhaust all of my thoughts here. If you want to know my complete thoughts, you can go check that video out. Uh, but the general broad strokes are that this movie is very good. I think it captures a lot of the same charm as the original but it does still have some flaws, which you will see me talk about in that video if you want to go check that out. The Night is Short Walk-On Girl is directed by Masaki Yuasa. Now, Yuasa is actually my favorite anime director ever. Most notably, he directed Ping Pong the Animation, which I feel like is one of the greatest works of fiction ever. I absolutely love it. You have to give it a watch. But anyways, um, like a lot of his stuff, he has a very unique art style, and it's been different for like pretty much all of his works that I've seen. This one actually shares the art style of Tatami Galaxy, which I have actually not seen. I really should, but it's still super unique. All the visuals are really interesting and surreal. This movie is very direct with its themes. Like They kind of hit you over the head with it, but I quite like that because even though the themes are direct, it's like, okay, I know what this movie's trying to tell me through its themes, but then how it does it you really get to pick apart through all the weird and interesting ways they do it this movie is overall actually like a slice of life but it does it in such unique and weird and fantastical ways it's just really cool and it's a really fun experience super artistic i absolutely loved it the wind rises is a very obviously uh personal story for Miyazaki his original intention well you know he's he said this a lot of times but he was like this is going to be my one last final film because I feel it's really important for me to tell this story and you can really feel like that comes through here um, there's the obvious connection where of course we know Miyazaki has such a strong love for aircraft and airplanes and you know that whole thing but it's also just a movie about 
creation and love and passion. And it's very powerful in that way. It very much feels like Miyazaki just put all those emotions into this movie and this movie, you know, delivers those right to the viewer. And it does it in a very, very well done way with a very well tailed story and beautiful animation. I don't know if I really have any strong complaints. I would say that there's maybe some things in the plot where I'm like, oh, that could have been cleaned up. But it's overall really hard to critique when this movie is just so powerful. Then I watched Top Gun. Now, this was pretty much exactly what I expected it to be. I've heard over and over that this is like, this is like the quintessential 80s movie. That's what I hear, you know, all the time. And yeah, that's what it was. Now, to be honest, I have not like watched a lot of those iconic 80s movies. So maybe I don't get the vibe of 80s movies completely. But like this still like fit in with the general idea of what I think of that is. Um, honestly, it might help that I don't know 80s movies as well because it did it made it feel a bit more unique. Probably I didn't think it had a fair amount of personality and everything. Uh, but overall, yeah, Top Gun is kind of it's kind of forgettable. It's it's weird that they made a a legacy sequel when I, I feel like it's just not something that would stick with people, but. I guess it did. And I mean, at least the best thing about it is that we got Top Gun Maverick out of it. So that's pretty cool. The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. I've already seen this movie like forever ago. This is during the time when I watched like a crap ton of anime and I pretty much just went through them and didn't like digest them really all too much. So I didn't remember a whole lot. Uh, I had also watched the series, obviously, because this movie is the sequel to that. Uh, the series is pretty good. I enjoy it. I think it's quite fun and silly. And yeah, I don't know what else to say other than I enjoy it. I'm not going to recommend it to other people because it's not too incredible. But it does do a great job at setting up this movie because this movie adds a lot more complexity and emotion to it that only works uh, because of the setup it had. Uh, this time I watched it in dub. And overall, I think the weird thing is that I think a lot of the characters dub voices are just fine, but the main character, Kian, his voice actor in English is so good and it works really well. Uh, this being a movie where there's a lot of like narration and internal monologue, I think the fact that his voice and his voice actor, I mean, is really great, I think makes the dub totally worth watching. Overall, this was just a great movie. I think it's really interesting. So hard to like tell people to watch this because they have to watch the series. And again, that's a hard thing to recommend, but it's still good. And that's everything I watched. You can go ahead and tell me your thoughts on these movies and on this video down in the comments. Uh, I do also want to say is no, I did not watch The Wild Robot this month. I'm waiting to watch it with someone, so I'm going to watch it in the next week or two. But anyways, remember to save the blobfish and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.